Hey guys. Um, so there are three villains in Beowulf, right? It's not just Grendel, even though he's the most well-known. Um, there's also Grendel's mother, who we're going to meet today, uh, and then a dragon who we'll meet later uh, next week. Um, so Grendel's mother is obviously very upset about the death of her son. She is a monster, uh, much like Grendel is, um, and she decides to take revenge. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to be seeing here. So we have her introduction, and we're also going to be reading her battle with Beowulf. So she reached Herat, where the Danes slept as though already dead. Her visit ended their good fortune, reversed the bright vein of their luck. No female, no matter how fierce, could have come with a man's strength, fought with the power and courage men fight with, smashing their shining swords, their bloody hammer-forged blades onto boar-headed helmets, slashing and stabbing with the sharpest of points. The soldiers raised their shields and drew those gleaming swords, swung them above the piled up benches, leaving their mail shirts and their helmets where they'd lain when the terror took hold of them. To save her life, she moved still faster, took a single victim and fled from the hall, running to the moors, discovered, but her supper assured, sheltered in her dripping claws. So Grendel's mother functions a lot differently from Grendel, right? He comes in, he murders everybody, he sweeps up 30 men with his claws, and he's done. Um, she is, is smaller, right? She's smaller, but she's a little bit more choosy um, in who she ends up taking. She'd taken Hrothgar's closest friend, the man he loved most, or the man he most loved of all men on earth. She'd killed a glorious soldier, cut a noble life short. No geet could have stopped her. Beowulf and his band had been given better beds. Sleep had come to them in a different hall. Then all Herot burst into shouts. She had carried off Grendel's claw. Sorrow had returned to Denmark. They'd traded deaths, Danes and monsters, but no one had won. Both had lost, right? Um, so... Yeah, uh, she she takes one person, and it's it's one of Hrothgar's favorite warriors, like his best friend. Um, so she's a lot more cunning than Grendel, right? Grendel would cause pain just by trying to kill as many people as possible, whereas Grendel's mother causes pain by um, by really like getting at the heart of her enemy. Uh, and so that's how she is taking revenge. And it makes sense, right? Grendel was her child. Um, and she wants to hurt Hrothgar the same way that she's been hurt. So she needs to take the man that he loved most of all men on earth the same way that Hrothgar, via Beowulf, took that which she loved more, mo more than anything on earth. So um, Hrothgar sends for Beowulf, obviously, because Beowulf is his monster slayer. So he tells her where Grendel's, tells him where Grendel's mother lives. Uh, which is darn it, down in a deep, dark lake. They live in secret places, windy cliffs, wolf dens, where water pours from the rocks, then runs underground, where mist steams like black clouds, and the groves of trees growing out over their lake are all covered with frozen spray, and wind down snake-like roots that reach as far as the water and help keep it dark. So it's a pretty horrifying um, lake here that she lives in. Um, it's not just a, a nice one, right? Um, it's a, it's a it's a really gross one. It's got steams. Um, there's it's frozen. There's all these trees all around that keep it really dark all the time. At night, that lake burns like a torch. No one knows its bottom. No wisdom reaches such depths. A deer hunted through the woods by packs of hounds, a stag with great horns, though driven through the forest from faraway places, prefers to die on those shores, refuses to save its life in that water. Um, so that's just kind of emphasizing how unnerving uh, and how kind of otherworldly this lake is, is even if a deer is being, will face certain death on the shore and they might survive in the water, they don't go in the water uh, because of how horrifying it is. It isn't far, nor, excuse me, nor is it a pleasant spot. When the wind stirs and storms wave, or sorry, when the wind stirs and storms, waves splash toward the sky, as dark as the air, as black as the rain that the heavens weep. Our only help, again, lies with you. Grendel's mother is hidden in her terrible home, in a place you've not seen. Seek it if you dare. Save us once more. And again, twisted gold, heaped up ancient treasure will reward you for the battle you will win. And now we move into the battle. Because obviously Beowulf's going to go, right? He, uh, he can't help himself. He, you know, has to, has to uh, attack. He can't just allow this thing to happen. He needs more fame. He leaped into the lake, would not wait for anyone's answer. The heaving water covered him over. For hours, he sank through the waves. At last, he saw the mud at the bottom. 
excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm yawning. And all at once the greedy she-wolf who'd ruled those waters for half a hundred years discovered him, saw that a creature from above had come to explore the bottom of her wet world. She welcomed him in her claws, clutched at him savagely, but could not harm him, tried to work her fingers through the tight ring woven mail on his breast, but tore and scratched in vain. Um, so again, we have that nice cunning, greedy she-wolf is such a great one. Um, and here we're kind of dealing with the fact that Beowulf is, is basically like larger than life. For hours, he sank through the waves, right? Nobody can hold their breath for hours. Um, but, you know, Beowulf is this kind of larger than life figure, so he gets to, to do those things. Then she carried him, armor and sword and all, to her home. He struggled to free his weapon and failed. The fight brought other monsters swimming to see her catch, a host of sea beasts who beat at his mail shirt, stabbing with tusks and teeth as they followed along. Then he realized suddenly that she'd brought him into someone's battle hall. And there the water's heat could not hurt him, nor anything in the lake attack him through the building's high arcing roof. A brilliant light burned all around him, the, the lake itself like a fiery flame. Then he saw the mighty water witch and swung his sword, his ring-marked blade straight at her head. The iron sang its fierce song, sang Beowulf's strength. But her guest discovered that no sword, no sword could slice her evil skin, that Hrunting could not hurt her, was useless now when he needed it. So much like Grendel, um, Beowulf, or rather Grendel's mother, is also protected from, uh, from any weaponry, um, even this kind of named sword. So that's the name of Beowulf's sword, Hrunting. Um, and this would have been uh, an heirloom, right? This would have been passed down, much like his male shirt. So that's another one of those epic hero characteristics is this idea that they're, they have armor or weaponry that is important um, and that kind of takes on a life of its own. They wrestled. She ripped and tore and clawed at him, bit holes in his helmet, and that too failed him. For the first time in years of being worn to war, it would earn no glory. It was the last time anyone would wear it. But Beowulf longed only for fame, leaped back into battle. He tossed his sword aside, angry. The steel-edged blade lay where he dropped it. If weapons were useless, he'd use his hands to strengthen his fingers. So fame comes to the men who mean to win it and care, enough, uh, care about nothing else. He raised his arms and seized her by the shoulder. Anger doubled his strength. He threw her to the floor. She fell, Grendel's fierce mother, and the Geat's proud prince was ready to leap on her, but she rose at once and repaid him with her clutching claws, wildly tearing at him. He was weary, that best and strongest of soldiers. His feet stumbled, and in an instant she had, ha she had him down, held helpless. So this fight is going significantly differently um, for Beowulf than it did um, with his fight with Grendel, right? The fight with Grendel was never really a competition. Uh, Beowulf was never in any true danger. And here, um, she's, you know, she's wrecked his helmet. Um, she uh, is, um, you know, she's got him pinned right now. She has him down, held helpless. Uh, and there's nothing he can do about it. Um, so, you know, we're starting to see, uh, so the reasons for that are, are probably twofold. One, Grendel's mother has every reason to be angry and vengeful. And I'm assuming that that's probably granting her extra strength, right? The death of her son. Um, but two, they're also, you know, Beowulf is not in his native element, right? He fought Grendel on land in the Mead Hall, uh, which is, you know, a, definitely a, a realm for humans. And he's fighting Grendel's mother instead underwater, right? Where she is stronger. This is her lair that he has gone to. Um, so I think it's just kind of showing us the, the fact that Beowulf does have limitations, right? That there, there are things that are difficult for him, which makes him a little bit more complicated. Squatting with her weight on his stomach, she drew a dagger brown with dried blood and prepared to avenge her only son. But he was stretched on his back and her stabbing blade was blunted by the woven mail shirt he wore on his chest. The hammered links held, the point could not touch him. He'd traveled to the bottom of the earth at Getho's son and died there if that shining woven metal had not helped. And holy God, who sent him victory, gave judgment for truth and right, ruler of the heavens, once Beowulf was back on his feet and fighting. So the only thing that saves Beowulf there is his mail shirt. It's not that he's um, great. It's not that he's special. Uh, he just happened to be wearing a male shirt that held, and that's what saved him. Though you'll notice that the Beowulf poet, again, kind of inserts himself, and he's like, and it was God, too. Don't forget God. God also saved him. Then he saw, hanging on the wall, a heavy sword, hammered by giants, strong and blessed with their magic, the best of all weapons, but so massive that no ordinary man could lift its carved and decorated length. He drew it from its scabbard, broke the chain on its hilt, and then, savage, now angry and desperate, lifted it high over his head and struck with all the strength he had left. 
caught her in the neck and cut it through, broke bones and all. Her body fell to the floor, lifeless. The sword was wet with her blood and Beowulf rejoiced at the sight. Um, so he finds a magic weapon, right? The, the giant's, the giant's sword. And again, that idea that there's, there's weaponry that, that finds the hero, that chooses the hero is, is such a great epic hero characteristic. The brilliant light shone suddenly as though burning in that hall and as bright as heaven's own candle lit in the sky. That's the sun, heaven's own candle. He looked at her home, then he looked at her home, then followed along the, following along the wall, went walking, his hands tight on the sword, his heart still angry. He was hunting another dead monster and took his weapon with him for final revenge against Grendel's vicious attacks, his nighttime raids over and over, coming to Herot when Hrothgar's men slept, killing them in their beds, eating some on the spot, fifteen or more, and running to his loathsome moor with another sick, sickening me- with another such sickening meal waiting in his pouch. But Beowulf repaid him for those visits, found him lying dead in the corner, armless, exactly as that fierce fighter had sent him out from Herat, then struck off his his head with a single swift blow. The body jerked for the last time, then lay still. Um, so again, uh, this is not a very Christian thing to do, obviously, right? This is a very pagan thing um, to say, you know, he has to desecrate the body. He's still angry. He's still taking vengeance on Grendel for what he did. Uh, and he does so by, you know, kind of creating a, a mockery of his body um, and stealing the the head, right? Part of the reason he steals the head is because the mom stole the arm as well. Um, so, you know, the idea of her son, you know, part of her son hanging on the wall of some mead hall as a trophy, um, I imagine is something that would make any mother probably pretty angry. The wise old warriors who surrounded Hrothgar, like him staring into the monster's lake, saw the waves surging and blood spurting about. They spoke about Beowulf, all the gray beards, whispered together and said that hope was gone, that the hero had lost babe in his life at once and would never return to the living, come back as triumphant as he had left. Almost all agreed that Grendel's mighty mother, the she-wolf, had killed him. Um, so um, um, we have a, a change in perspective here, right? We've pretty much been following Beowulf pretty closely this whole time. And now all of a sudden our perspective has shifted. And now we're not at the bottom of the lake of Beowulf anymore. Instead, we're up uh, on the shores um, and we're there with Hrothgar and all of his warriors. And what they see is a monsterish lake that is now surging with blood all through it. Um, and so they assume that it's Beowulf's blood, that he's dead. But in fact, it's the mom's. The sun slid over past noon, went further down. The Danes gave up, left the lake, and went home, Hrothgar with them. The Geats stayed, sat sadly, watching, imagining they saw their lord, but not believing they would ever see him again. Um, and again, so here we have that loyal attitude of the Geats. I'm so sorry, I'm yawning. Um, the loyal attitude of the Geats, the fact that they stay, despite the fact that it's entirely possible that their king is dead, or not king, their prince, rather. Um, and, you know, the Danes leave, but the Geats stay. They, they know that they have to stay uh, and kind of see this out. Then the sword melted, blood-soaked, dripping down like water, disappearing like ice when the world's eternal lord loosens invisible fetters and unwinds icicles and frost as only he can. He who rules time and seasons, he who is truly God. Again, I think that was a little like <laughs> intercession that he put in there. Um, but basically it's melting, right? This, this blade is melting because of the acidity of this blood. <laughs> The monster's hall was full of rich treasures, but all that Beowulf took was Grendel's head and the hilt of the giant's jeweled sword. The rest of that ring-marked blade had dissolved in Grendel's steaming blood, boiling even after his death. Oh, sorry, Grendel's blood, not his mother's. Uh, and then the battle's only survivors swam up and away from those silent corpses. The water was calm and clean, the whole huge lake peaceful once the demons who'd lived in it were dead. Then that noble protector of all seamen swam to land, rejoicing in the heavy burdens he was bringing with him. He and all his glorious band of Geats thanked God that their leader had come back unharmed. They left the lake together. The Geats carried Her Beowulf's helmet and his mail shirt. Behind them, the water slowly thickened as the monster's blood came seeping up. They walked quickly, happily across the roads all of them remembered left the lake and the cliffs alongside it, brave men staggering under the weight of Grendel's skull, too heavy for fewer than four of them to handle, two on each side of the spear jammed through it, yet proud of their ugly load and determined that the Danes seated in Herat should see it. Soon, 14 wow. Geats arrived at the hall, bold and warlike, and with Beowulf, their lord of the air, they walked on the mead hall green, 
Then the Geats' brave prince entered Herat, covered with glory for the daring battles he had fought. He sought Hrothgar to salute him and show Grendel's head. He carried that terrible trophy by the hair, brought it straight to where the Danes sat, drinking the queen among them. It was a weird and wonderful sight, and the warriors stared. Um, so again, showing us how strong Beowulf is, uh, it takes four uh, of the Geats to carry Grendel's skull, and he carried it up no problem, like one-handed with the sword in the other, or the sword hilt in the other. Um, so again, just kind of showing us how larger than life uh, Beowulf is. So Beowulf triumphant yet again, um, and he has now eradicated the line of Grendel um, uh, and uh, has, has the match set, right? Mother and son, okay? Uh, let me know if you have any questions.